motion of the rotational inertia or moment of inertia, some people call it, um, for the case of a hollow cylinder. So not a solid cylinder, but a hollow cylinder. It has uniform density for its material. It has an inner radius R1, an outer radius R2, and it's rotating about an axis that's uh, right along the uh, central axis of the cylinder. We want to know what the rotational inertia formula is uh, based on the mass of the cylinder and the two radii, the inner and outer radii for the walls. So let's start with a little drawing and you're going to get a little bit of the answer here, but uh, let's see what we have. So our basic relationship for our rotational inertia is that we have a um, integration or antiderivative that has to be performed to add up all the individual contributions to I, our basic uh, formula for the rotational inertia for a point object is mr squared. So here we're going to take a little infinitesimal mass at various places in the cylinder, multiply by r squared for each of those infinitesimal masses and add up the result with the antiderivative. So in the picture here, you can see our cylinder and there's an inner radius r1. We've got a distance r to the infinitesimal mass that we're going to use, which is a uh, cylindrical shell. The r is going to vary as we go outward from r1 to r2 and end at r2. Uh, how do we get a handle on the dm? I want to change the dm to be based on r um, so we can do the uh, antiderivative. I want to really change the variable here from dm to dr. So we can accomplish that through the concept of density. Density is mass over volume. So if I'd switch this to an infinitesimal for the mass and the volume and then solve for dm, I have density times the infinitesimal volume for this cylindrical shell that's shaded in here. Um, the volume for that shell is going to be 2 pi r. That's the radius of the shell. The cylinder has a height h, and then we have a dr for the thickness of that shell. So that gets us you know, meters, 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 gets us meter cube for the volume. So if I put that in here for the infinitesimal volume, I can uh, have a relationship to replace dm. dm is density, 2 pi r, h times dr. So let's go to the antiderivative then. and we're doing this antiderivative r squared dm, r squared, and now I've replaced dm with density 2 pi r, h, and dr. There are constants that we can pull out of the antiderivative operation, 2 pi, rho, and h, and leaves us with you know, r squared times r, gives us r cubed dr, nice simple uh, antiderivative. Again, the constants 2 pi, rho, h, the r cubed, when I do the antiderivative, becomes r to the fourth divided by four. That has to be evaluated at r2 and r1, the upper limit and the lower limit. So we do that here, and we get r2 to the fourth power, I've pulled out the four, minus r1 to the fourth power. Again, this factor of four has been uh, uh, factored out. <laughs> That's what we do with factors. Then let's, uh, this is the formula for the rotational inertia, but it's not a very convenient form. It has a rho, has an h. We can get the mass of the cylinder, the total mass of the cylinder, if we consider that the density of the cylinder is mass divided by volume. The cylinder is hollow in the middle. So to find the volume, I need pi r2 squared minus pi r1 squared. That is our um, two areas, if you will. Uh, pi r2 squared, that's the area of the whole cylinder. I subtract off the empty space area, pi r1 squared. That's the empty space in the middle. And then multiply by h, the height of the cylinder. That's our total volume. So we're going to take this now, this row definition, and we're going to drop it in here for the um, 
density in our uh, formula for rotational inertia. So the 2 and the 4, that simplifies to a 2. So the pi over 2. And then for rho, we put in m, h pi r2 squared minus r1 squared. Then we have h, and then we have r2 to the fourth minus r1 to the fourth. Well, those don't quite cancel. The powers are different. So let's factor r2 to the, r2 to the fourth minus r1 to the fourth. That factors into r2 squared plus r1 squared times r2 squared minus r1 squared. You ought to check that multiplication. Make sure you can produce r2 to the fourth minus r1 to the fourth. So we're doing that and putting that in. So we're going to replace this r2 to the fourth minus r1 to the fourth. Replace it with these two binomials multiplied together. And now we see that one of these factors is matched here. So this r2 squared minus r1 squared is canceling the factor in the denominator, in the numerator, uh, r2 squared minus r1 squared. And we're left with our result here for the rotational inertia for a hollow cylinder, 1 half m r2 squared plus r1 squared. Let's check this for a couple of cases. Let's suppose that r1 equals r2, really hollow. In fact, all the mass is out here at the edge of the uh, cylinder. Drop this picture down again. R1 equals R2. So all the mass is the same distance away from the axis of rotation. We've really got a thin hoop here. So if R1 equals R2, I'll just put in R. They have 1 half M R squared plus R squared. That's putting in R's for the R2 and R1. I have 2 r squared in the parentheses. The twos cancel. I just get m r squared. All the mass is at a radius capital R from the center. So we just get the rotational inertia, the total mass that's involved times r squared. So let's suppose r1 is 0. Now we're filled in. The cylinder is not hollow. Instead, we've got mass all the way to the axis of rotation. That's just a disk, a filled in cylinder. And we get 1 half m r squared, r1 is 0, and we get 1 half m r squared. That's our formula for the disk. So this has hopes of being correct. It's correct in the two extreme cases, r1 equal r2 and r1 equals 0. So we've used the tools of calculus to provide us with the rotational inertia for a hollow cylinder. You might want to pause and inspect this uh, this picture a few times if I went too fast through the formulas. But antiderivative of r squared dm, we use some facts about density as mass over volume to substitute for the dm. We perform the antiderivative. And then to get rid of, turns out, rho and h, we use, again, the density. Um, the density is equal to mass over volume. That substitution allows us to cancel rho and h, and a little bit of algebra with the uh, uh, r to the fourth, r2 to the fourth minus r1 to the fourth. So hope you have fun with this type of uh, this work. That's an example, rotational inertia of a hollow cylinder.